aware of the commencement exercise at Riverside uh, Christian in the gym tomorrow night for graduation. So we want to make sure you feel invited to that as well. So this is one of my favorite events of the school year. We have a lot of good ones. If you've ever been to our Thanksgiving chapel or our Christmas chapel, those kinds of things. But we get to hear all the kids speak tonight. So we're really looking forward to most of their speeches, I think. <laughs> I do want to say we did, I, I was kidding a little bit, about 2012, but we did have a great week last week in Cannon Beach, and uh, we worked very, very hard at uh, helping them prepare for the summer camping program, and it really is a blessing to them. And this group more than adequately maintained the reputation that our group has and how uh, what we bring to them and, and how hard we work. So I just want to thank you, class publicly, for all the work that you did last week and make sure that you know that you were appreciated not only by Cannon Beach, uh, but by your sponsors and by the school as well. So let's give them a hand. I've never done that before, so this is the first time they got cheered on for the work at Cannon Beach the week before. So. I uh, just want to make sure you feel welcome tonight, and it's a delight to have you, and I'm going to invite Mr. Steinis, who's going to come and pray to start our meeting this evening, and we just hope you'll enjoy it from the beginning to the end. If you could go ahead and bow your heads, we'll open the ceremony tonight. Dear Jesus, we want to thank you, and first and foremost, Lord, we want to recognize you and thank you for everything you've done to bring these 23 students here into the lives of these families and these people in this room. We thank you for the blessings that they have bestowed upon us and, and that they have continued to show for us as we look forward to seeing what the rest of their lives are going to turn into in the past that you're going to lead them down. Thank you for bringing them into each one of our lives. Thank you for the families that are here and the people that have put time and energy and hours into their lives, God. Thank you for the love and, and the growth that they have experienced by every life that has touched each and every one of them, God. Lord, I just want to tonight ask you that please surround each and every one of them as they go forward here from Riverside Christian in whatever way that they choose, whatever way that you lead them, that you would bless them, that you would keep them, that you would give them the things that they need to follow the path that you have set before them. We know that that path is not always easy, it's not always straight, and we don't always make the right choices, God, but we know that you said you will be there for us, that you will be there with us, and that with you we can do all things. I just ask and pray that you would do that for each and every one of them, God. Thank you for all the many blessings that you've given us. Thank you for that. In Jesus' name I pray. Everybody said it. Amen. Amen. Most of all, my class. Mom, I get out there somewhere. <laughs> Even though we disagree at times, I mean a lot. Uh, you are my foundation. You have sacrificed so much for me, and I'm so thankful. Dad, uh, yep. Thank you for always being there. You, uh, even when you're on the other side of the globe, your texts and always seem to make my day so much better. To Sam and Dan, you guys to deal with my craziness for all your life. So good luck. <laughs> Both of you have been my support, and I've been through the worst and best with you. Even though I annoy and embarrass you, I love you both so much. Good luck next year, you two, and remember to take it easy and at least have a bit of fun. And Dan, don't break your leg. <laughs> <laughs> to the teachers and faculty of this school, who have helped me grow up into the person I am today, I could not have done it without your love and support. By keeping me in check, you have all helped me mold, helped mold me into the young man I am. I would like to thank Kennedy and Kara. I love you too so much. You've, you've been my rock for the past five years. You've made me smile and laugh so much, it's probably not healthy. 
and setting off fire alarms at the Belknap House, surviving car rides with you two. They're just the top of the iceberg of the adventures that we've had today. Both of you have impacted my life so much, and I think I'm the luckiest person to have you two as my best friends. I love you both so, so much, and I can't wait for what adventures are still waiting. Jessica, thank you for being a great friend and golf buddy. You always knew how to make me laugh, you challenged me on the golf course, and you always were a loyal friend. Last of all, I would like to thank my new fan, the class of 2019. We have so many great memories together, listening and laughing at Nick's legendary quotes, cranking great with mayonnaise, and suffering through last minute corn notes. <laughs> I could not have survived the last four years without your guys' support. You have all seen me at my works, grumpy from staying up late doing projects, to my crazies, singing single ladies, and while standing on the desk in Mr. Harrington. <laughs> I thank you so much and love all you guys, and I hope for the best for all of you. Thank you.
I'd like to thank Mrs. Pagans for always encouraging me and reminding me to keep my head up. I'd like to thank Ms. Ambi for teaching probably my favorite class ever in U.S. history and for instilling in me the value of diligence and hard work. I want to thank all of my tennis coaches that I've had throughout the years for, help, for helping me to grow my game and improve as a player. I want to thank Gar Chapman for being an amazing role model and an incredible presence in my life. And lastly, I'd like to thank Mary Allen and Sam and Dan for being my second family. Love you guys. Thank you. Hi, I'm Nicholas Spear. I've been attending the school for 14 years or since pre-K. Now, I want to thank people that have helped me in my life throughout all of high school. I'd like to thank my mom and my dad for bringing me to the school in the first place and supporting me all the way through. I'd like to thank my church for paying for half of my tuition in order for me to keep going to the school. I'd like to thank my teachers and staff of the Riverside for always being there, supporting me, and helping me out through high school. But thank Mr. Reynolds for always being on my case. <laughs> and I'd in my class for more or less suffering the same amount as I did. <laughs> to their support, 
I appreciate them the most when it comes to um, extracurricular activities like going to concerts uh, in Las Vegas and San Francisco, which um, helped me broaden my uh, horizon and um, kind of understand you know, the world and whatever, and they get a revised uh, disposition. And um, yeah, our family is so connected that it just feels like we're just like friends. I think, um, and I also don't see things quite as black and white. Um, and um, yeah, um, I've been learning, able to learn, and thank you for giving me support and a great start um, with all of your unconditional support. You two 
two have made my time at Riverside immensely amazing. Ms. Pike is a particular has been with me has known me since kindergarten and has put up with my antics for over 12 years. Both of you never failed to brighten my day and I will miss you both immensely. <laughs> Next, to my friends. First and foremost, Josephine Kennedy. I genuinely, genuinely do not know how I would have survived high school without you two. You both mean, mean a little to me. Next, Michaela and Samantha. Firstly, Michaela, thank you for all the copies you've made me over the last four years. I've lost track of how many that is, and to be honest, I'd rather not divulge that number. Your determination is unparalleled. Both of you have a steadfast faith in the Lord, even in the face of immense struggle, and I count myself lucky to have you both as a friend. And last, but certainly not least, I would like to thank each and every single person sitting on this stage with me. You have each impacted my life in a unique way, and I will forever be shaped by the last 12 years we have spent together. Thank you. Vincent 
for going beyond the teachings of literature and um, teaching the true meaning of what stories really mean and what they represent, and teaching the life stories that they really can impact your life. And uh, Mr. Heron, thank you for being patient with me and answering all my weird but relevant kind of questions, um, either about the Bible or anything else. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Lawrence, for your incredible enthusiasm that you've shown me every single day. Um, Mrs. Studoff, thank you for your, um, your wonderful spirit that's constantly always there and on fire for the Lord and you're not afraid to show it. Um, Mr. Evans, thank you for being an example of what a true Christ-like character is. Mrs. Tranch, thank you for sharing the same love and appreciation for the arts as I do. For, and thank you for your wonderful help and interest that you put into art therapy as I was learning that I love that as well. Um, Mrs. Stein, thank you for loving, uh, loving me and caring for me for all these years. It's been very impactful in my life. And um, I can truly and honestly say I wouldn't have been able to make it through to today without all these people. I'll miss you guys and God bless.
I'd like to thank my coach uh, from Gonzaga, Coach Harmon, as well as Greg Kilsheimer. Uh, he couldn't make it tonight. Coach Kilsheimer, you've given me a new perspective, not only on the game of baseball, but on life. And without that, I would not be in the position I am in now. Lastly, I'd like to thank my class. Thank you for being there through it. You all will forever be part of my life, and I only wish the best for you. I'm Sarah Engel, and I've attended Riverside since pre-kindergarten. Mom, Dad, I don't know even how to begin to thank you for these last 18 years. Your patience, love, and diligence have enabled me to become the person that I am. I can see now just how rare it is to have a strong and loving family, and I know I can never be too grateful for the privilege of being raised right. Isaac, I know Mom was worried about us for a while there. You know, those lovely childhood years when we literally scar each other for life. <laughs> but I have been so impressed with the respectful, considerate, and caring young man you've become. Thank you for your patience with me when things got rough, for understanding when I needed space and when I just needed a big watching buddy. Annalisa, thank you so much for sharing your faith and your maturity, not to mention your bookshelf and your tea cabinet. Mariah, Thank you for being real and always listening, whether we're talking life advice or just fan conspiracy theories. Jen, thanks for being an all-around amazing big brother. Grandma, Grandpa, Omar, Aunt Faye, Uncle Tim, Aunt Kim, Uncle Ken, and all of my cousins, it is such a blessing to have so much family nearby. Thank you for always being ready to help with anything I need, for taking an interest in my life, and for being so generous with your time. I'd like to thank my worship teams at school and church for showing me faith in action and for never failing to inspire and uplift me. I'd also like to thank the Yakima Dance Syndicate for pushing me in every way possible and turning a timid 13-year-old wallflower into a dancer and a leader. Also, shout out to the AP Bio crew for surviving the hardest class of our lives together and having an inordinate amount of fun doing it. Lastly, but definitely not least, I'd like to thank all my teachers for investing in us, not just academically, but personally and spiritually as well. It's an incredibly difficult job, and you all do a patients of martyrs. Each one of you has brought something really special to Riverside and to your students' lives, and to my life. Olivia Jones, and I'd like to say that before this, my makeup looked a lot better. Friends, <laughs> <laughs> family, and loved ones, welcome to Baccalaureate. First and foremost, I want to thank God for all that He's done in my life. I cannot even begin to express my thanks and gratitude for our work. Without Him, I don't know if I would have made it to this point. I'd love to say that I would have, and it would have just been a little bit harder. But I can't. If the Lord hadn't prompted my brothers to like, come to Riverside, then I don't know if I would. God is the one who provided the funds so that all three of us can attend the All the people that I will be thanking tonight have been put into my life by God. His grace, provisions, love, and mercy abound. And I'd like to thank my parents, Keith and Kale Jones, who raised me with the foundation of the Bible. I'm good. <laughs> They're my best friends, my confidants, and my biggest cheerleaders in life. I cannot thank you enough. I'd like to thank my grandparents for the amazing love, support, and wisdom they provide my life. Thank you to all my aunts, uncles, and cousins. I love you all so much. Thank you to all the people who have continually prayed for me before I was born. Thank you to all my friends who never failed to make me laugh, who have a secured place in my heart forever. Thank you to my teachers who have not only helped me to love learning, but to also love God. Thank you. Sometimes I start a sentence and I don't know where it go. It's going. 
I just hope it runs away along the way. Might be stop. I would like to thank anyone who has dealt with me. Um, my classmates, the student body, and my mom, who I have to uh, point out was late, so that's where I get it from. <laughs>
And I want to thank my dad for all of the advice he's given me. Um, and I want to thank my sister for just always being there to talk. And if I go in there and it's like midnight and I'm like, hey, are you up? And she's like, no. Like, I need to talk. And she's like, okay. <laughs> Um, so I love my family and my friends, I named kind of the people that have been there just all the time on the group chats and always like, Emily, don't do that. Emily, no. Um, so, <laughs> Olivia and Allie, Anna, Melissa, and Sarah, Sarah, Emily, and Sarah Zirkel. I love you guys and I love the rest of you too, but these guys have been kind of just my squad, and I always feel supported by them. Um, and I would like to thank my teachers, Mrs. Tranch and Mrs. Vincent. Both of you have given me so much advice and support and helped me grow in um, the subjects. So I'm better at writing English papers because of Mrs. Vincent and much better at art because of Mrs. Tranch. And um, thank you to everybody who's been there for me. My name is Zach Spigas. I've been attending Riverside since first grade and uh, made memory, many, wait, made many great memories here. That was a tongue twister, but it was the one I was typing. Okay. Um, <laughs> but those memories wouldn't, uh, wouldn't have been made if it wasn't for the opportunity to attend Riverside in the first place. So first off, I want to thank my parents for uh, giving me the opportunity to go to Riverside. Mom and Dad has always been there for me every step of the way. Uh, they taught me many things up to this point. Most importantly, they've showed me that, above all else, love the Lord and pursue Him. There's three teachers that I want to recognize that really made this last year of Riverside a year to remember for me. Uh, first off, I want to thank Mr. Emmons and his patience. I cannot tell you how many times I intentionally played doxology in guitar class just to get a reaction out of it. It was literally in between every song. Uh, I came into guitar class not knowing how to play, and Mr. Emmons taught me and put up with my frustrations, mainly with Sarah Nick uh, Secondly, I want to thank Mr. Knudsen. Although I did not have the opportunity to take a class with him, I did see him every morning before school and we got, got to discuss um, how many points the day was worth depending on what day it was and what was going on. He started my day off with a smile, which is something that would be very hard to do in high school. I also want to thank Mrs. Lawrence for being a teacher I could go to just to talk about whatever. You're, you've always been there for me and I will miss you in the conversations we have. Lastly, I want to thank my class. Hands down, I've always been the most obnoxious kid in class. <laughs> You guys have put up with me and taught me many things too. Friends are super, super important to have, and uh, as all of you guys go off to college, I think the best piece of advice I can give you guys is find a crew, find a job, keep flying. Thanks, guys. start out with thanking my mom and dad. You guys have done so much for me that I don't even know where to start. Thank you for always being so supportive of me, even if I wanted to do something absolutely crazy. Thank you for always going above and beyond, for coming to every single one of my volleyball games, basketball games for cheer, and golf matches, even if they were four hours away. Thanks, Mom, for always taking care of all the little things that no one else thinks of. Thank you for giving me your love for books and some of your accounting genes. Thanks, Dad, for being so involved at the school and in our lives. I don't think there is a single field trip in elementary school that you did not go on. And thank you for being my video game buddy for when I come home and I have a bad day and I just want to blow something up. Um, to Amy Van Leek, thank you for being more than just a teacher. Thank you for being one of my closest friends. Thank you for all the crazy A-push memories like little boxes or Cornell notes when we would pull on lighters and not tell you. <laughs> and thank you for always being available to just give advice or to talk. To Mr. Benson, these past five years with you as my teacher has been unforgettable. Thank you for always believing me and encouraging me to keep fighting through the horribly difficult math problems, especially in physics, which I know you know I hated every single second of it. 
Thank you for all the stories you have to tell and the lessons you have to teach, and thank you for being such a big supporter of us all. To Mr. Van Beek, thank you for taking the time out of your crazy days to stop in the halls and say a quick hello. Thank you for all you do for the school and all that you have done for us, including being the barbecue master. To Mrs. Stein, thank you so much for working hard to make sure that everything gets done and for keeping all of us in line. To Mrs. Peggins, thank you so much for watching out for me since I was probably four years old. Thanks for all the laughs in the hallways and for all the hugs. To Tanya Faxon, thank you for all the guidance and cheer and for putting up with us for the last four years. Thank you for being such a dear friend and for all of our conversations. To Mary Allen, thank you for being like a second mom to me. Thank you for always having your home open and making me feel like part of the family. Plus, if any of you ever have the chance to have Mary Allen cook for you, take the opportunity. Her food is amazing. <laughs> So Molly Vola, she was our golf coach this year, and she has such a positive perspective in life. Thank you for reminding me of all the blessings life can bring. And to Sammy, thank you for being the best homework buddy anyone could ever ask for. These past four years with you have been a great adventure. And Joe, thank you for being such an amazing friend who has always been there no matter what. Last but not least, thank you to my class. Thank you for always pushing me to be the best version of myself and always having my back. I will never forget you guys, and I love you guys. Mrs. Stein has been my shoulder crown and caffeine supplier 
um, and help me motivate me every day to finish my senior year strong, um, even though my senior ride is for every single day. Uh, Mrs. Peggins, my official school mom, um, and gives me a hug every time I see her, and I do not know what I'm going to do without those friends next year in college. Um, most of all, I'd like to thank Riverside as a whole uh, for being my home, my place of learning, uh, and a beacon of hope when I was going through some of the hardest times of my life. Uh, RCS is the reason I'm starting this new adventure and the reason why I was succeeding with it. Everything you've done for me in the past few years. 
Your positive attitude and compassion for others and your desire to push yourself to your best of your abilities is going to bring you so far in life. I love you so much. To Anne Leslie for coming to all my sporting events and to all my programs, thank you so much. Mom and Dad, thank you for bringing me to the school. Thank you for giving me the incredible opportunity to grow and learn in the Christian community. Dad, thank you for teaching me about hard work and for sharing your love and heart with me. Thank you for always believing in me and for always pushing me to pursue my dreams. You never give up on me once and always want the best for me. I am forever grateful of all the things you do for me and all the sacrifices you have made. To Mom, thank you for going above and beyond for me, for all the sacrifices you made for me and for being so strong. I hope when I am your age, I get to be as beautiful as you are. <laughs> Thank you for pushing me to be my best. I am forever for grateful for you and everything you do for me. I love you very much. Thank you. Roughly how it went. 
at a given time, he would call for a man, a prophet, to go to that person, perhaps out in the field, who was washing his socks by not watching his flocks. <laughs> And he would say, now I'll take some oil and I want you to pour it all over his head. Now that symbolic act communicated something. Not only to the person who had oil poured on him, but to all the witnesses around him. That meant that God is saw. You see, there's a twofold purpose in pouring oil on someone's head called anointing. The first was to establish the sovereignty of God. You see, God has a plan. God has a purpose. And God chooses people to fill that calling, to accomplish a task for Him, to honor Him, to bring glory to Him. Why? Because God is sovereign. So He would call a person to go pour oil on someone's head, and that person then became a king. He'd say, go to that person over there. He'd pour oil on his head, and that person would become a priest. Go over here, pour oil on that person's head, and that man became a prophet. Because God is sovereign. God sees what you will become in his hands. And it's his choosing, his prerogative, because he is God. Now, it doesn't matter what the calling was, whether you were a prophet, priest, or a king, everyone became a servant who was anointed. And you served God in whatever capacity you were called. The sovereignty of God, the servanthood of man. Now we come forward into the New Testament time, and we discover this. God has amplified this even further, and in a more spiritual and direct way. We discover that while in the Old Testament this anointing was limited, it was occasional, in the New Testament it's unlimited and it is not restricted. Everyone who is in Christ becomes anointed. Everyone. How do I know that? Well, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, oh look, it's very quick there. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21. It says, Now he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God. He who establishes us together with you in Christ and anointed us is God. You see, no one's left out. Everyone is set apart, called, anointed, gifted, empowered, and embraced to accomplish God's will. Now let's go back to that ship that cruised analogy. And you'll discover the ship has morphed. It's no longer made out of steel and glass. It's made out of flesh and bones. And the engine that drives the ship is your soul. That vessel is living. It's you. And God comes aboard that vessel, and he never intended to be a passenger with you. As much as you would like to be comforted by that, he comes to be the captain of the ship. He belongs on the bridge to navigate this vessel through all its courses throughout all eternity. He knows where the hidden rocks are, the reefs, the shallows. He has watched the currents for all eternity, and he knows the ebb and flow of the tides, and he's there so that you could sleep at night, knowing he watches over you. And if he is the captain of your ship, who are you? He's not a passenger, and you'll discover neither are you. There are no passengers aboard this ship. Everyone is anointed. Everyone has a place. You are a member of the ship's crew. You're not a passenger anymore. And that doesn't take away from the pleasure of the cruise. It adds even more to it. When I was on that princess cruise, that ship, I had great freedom, but not unlimited freedom. There were places on the ship 
if I couldn't go because I was a passenger. There were whole decks below me that were reserved only for the ship's crew. And I really wanted to go to the battleship. Uh, I wanted to go aft. I wanted to go to the engine room to see how it works. I couldn't go there. I was a passenger. But if I was a ship's crew member, I could go there. I wanted to go up on the bridge. I wanted to go in the navigation room. I wanted to read the charts. I wanted to listen to the daily communication between the captain and the, the entire ship. But I couldn't hear that either. Why? Because I was just a passenger. The ship's crew, the ship opens up to you. You have access forward and aft to the bridge, to the engine room, to every word that's being communicated because you belong. You're part of the ship, the body of the ship, the direction of the ship. Do you understand that? So if you will understand the sovereignty of God and the servanthood of men, you'll begin to understand what it means to be anointed. Now, to try as I might, I can't recreate a cruise for your behalf. Next year I'll bring it up to Mr. Mandy. Set aside about 50 grand. <laughs> but we can, in a small way, recreate this symbolic ritual which we we're about to do. Now, let me be very clear to you that we're not regressing back to an Old Testament prophetic priestly system. We know the difference between the simple and substance the shadow, and the fact. Everything in the Old Testament was building up to his son, Jesus Christ. The types, the patterns, the symbols, all of these were fulfilled in Jesus Christ. He is uh, the one who reveals to us God in the fullest measure. We only refer to this anointing as an object lesson, a visual aid to reinforce this notion of sovereignty and service you are called and set apart to God. Now, there is no power in the symbolic act to change your life. That's not its purpose. Okay? So, I just want you to know, there's nothing special in this Bible. It didn't come from Israel. It came from Walmart. Hate <laughs> <laughs> to burst your mystic bubble. But that means that with part of this, I will anoint you, and with the rest, I'll take it home and fry my chicken. <laughs> and the one who physically anoints you is me. Nothing special there. But if this means anything, if it could be an object lesson, it will appoint you to him, the captain of the ship, the Lord of glory, who has anointed you his own spirit and has placed you aboard the greatest vessel of all, eternal life. You see, you're not just bound for Alaska or a career. You're bound for glory. And God will get you there. If you understand that, then seniors, come aboard. <clears throat> Hey, and Bella, I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Zach Bethel, I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Nick Gurr, I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Nathan Bradford, thank you. I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Kyle Callaghan, I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Melissa Campbell, I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Kara Elsie, I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Court Jackson, I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Samantha Flippin, I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
Ellie Gilmore, I actually made with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Michaela Haywood, I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Sarah Zirkel, I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jacob Wood, <laughs> in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Anna Weaver, I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jessica Bly, I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Sextangus, I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And with you, Lord, I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Brianna Ruth, I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Olivia Jones, I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Sarah Immel, I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Reagan Ross, I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Joseph Allen, I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Kennedy Melnap, I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. O oh, gracious Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that you have loved these young men and women into graduation. You have brought them here. And Lord, as their ship is about to sail, be on board, be on the bridge, be the captain of their lives, and lead them on. Glory to them. Let them sleep at night, knowing that you are never sleeping, never resting, always there to guide, to protect, and what you will do. Oh Lord, I just pray that you will give them loving hearts, sea story legs, and the determination to go forward with you, wherever you call them. For this we pray, in Jesus' name, amen. Let's give a big hand to the Lord.